We used to enjoy. She would bring us clothes for Christmas. Yeah. Man, I remember that time. It was a nice moment, very sweet moment. I wouldn't even think of um, like of a father. So here she gets saved, and she joins a church. Mm -hmm. It's here at Pipeline. Mm -hmm. She was told, "These are not your children. Mm -hmm. You need to leave them." and get ma a man to marry you, whom you will bear legit children. Mm -hmm. These are illegitimate children. Mm -hmm. She came home, and she said, um, and I've come to realize that uh, you are not my children. I started praying. I could even fast and pray for her death. I started praying for my mother to die. And they told me, sit down and eat. We'll, we'll tell you what, uh, how she's doing. I told them, ah, it's not a big deal. Just tell me she's dead. Hi, hi. We hope you're doing well. Karibu ni sana to our channel once again. Mm. As we said, kila wiki lazima tunatafuta something to inspire you, something that we can learn together and grow together while also having fun. Mm -hmm. Right? So we yeah. hope you have enjoyed the episodes that we've had. Mm -hmm. We've had some really good games, right? Tulifanya <laughs> sing alone, nika kulemea. <laughs> And we last yeah. did the Never oh. Have I Ever game. Mm. So if you haven't checked out our nene, our videos, then mm. you to me fanya before, please, please, please go back and watch them. We believe yeah. that for every video, you will learn something and they will bless you. They will edify you. Mm. Yes. Uh, Pia Asanteni for the great support that you're continuing to give us. Uh, mm. Tafadhali, keep it here. We appreciate you and you encourage us a lot, a lot, a lot. So today, right into whatever we are discussing today, uh, we will be talking about relationship ya mama mm. na mtoto wake, basing it on uh, Joshua's life. Mm -hmm. uh, but recently, this was triggered by the recent the Mother's uh, Day, the recent celebrations, right? Yeah. yeah, and so you'll be telling us about how you were born, mm -hmm. um, and and the great and big, big, big uh, story <laughs> that you have. Wow! Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Karibu Sana. Sante. Uh, hope you're well. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It feels uh, good to be hosted. Yeah, and you relax. You don't want, don't even want to think about what you are going to say. Mm -hmm. next. It is mm -hmm. you who is giving the story. Yeah, I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> You've always been. Oh, amazing. Ah, yes. So, so, so the first question would be: mm -hmm. How were you born? Uh, what is your background? What kind of a family mm -hmm. uh, were you born into? Mm -hmm. uh, probably, if you know. Probably if you are firstborn, if you are sought after a child, mm -hmm. or you, if you are a baby who came, you know, unexpectedly, <laughs> yeah. would want to start from there because that is where the relationship between a mother mm -hmm. and her baby begins. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much, Web. Um, I'm the last born, mm -hmm. Kwetu. Mm -hmm. Your family of uh, our three siblings. Mm -hmm. So. Our sister, Eve, is our firstborn, mm -hmm. and we have a, I have two brothers. Mm -hmm. Then I'm the lastborn, mm -hmm. but a responsible la, la, lastborn. A very responsible one. Maisha ili sichapa ikafuta yarisha. Maisha ili God knew, and I think it's a plan of God for me to go what I through what I went yeah. through yeah. to prepare me for the for this time. Yes, sure. Yeah. Uh huh. 
So we are family of uh, four children. Mm-hmm. We have a ma- I have I, I had a mother. Mm-hmm. It's late. May mm-hmm. the Lord rest his soul in peace. Amen. And I uh, have my grandma, mm-hmm. whom I love so much, mm-hmm. so much. So zungu ende to mono mano. Yes. So that's uh, that's our family. Mm-hmm. And I know now people may be asking, what about your father? Yeah. Because many people know me with my three names, yeah, Joshua the Kakai surname. Munyoki, yeah. the surname. So people might be asking me about the surname. Mm. And may, I, I'll, I'll just give a brief uh, history of how the name come, came to be used mm-hmm. as my surname. Mm-hmm. And uh, allow me to take my Bible. Mm-hmm. I want mm-hmm. to read from the book of uh, Genesis, mm-hmm. chapter 16, first. Huh? Yeah. Then uh, I'll explain who is Munyoki now. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maid servant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid, to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. So let me get uh, reach there. It's uh, up to verse 2. The Bible says, uh, the, the, the end of the verse 2, the Bible says, And Abraham heeded to the voice of Sarai. Mm-hmm. So this time, is a, Abraham has not been blessed by, with a child yeah. through uh, Sarai. Yeah. So Sarai uh, requested him to go with the maid servant. So it's like taking the maid servant to to bear children for her. For her. Yeah. So that was that time. Mm-hmm. Coming now to our tradition as Kamba, mm-hmm. uh, some time back, the tradition was allowing the same thing to happen. Mm-hmm. If uh, your wife is not blessed with a child, then uh, the wife had the freedom to get another woman, bring home, to bear children for her. Mm-hmm. So these children, the, the, the woman who has been brought home, she would bear children with a man, uh, the husband to this other wife, uh, mm-hmm. to, the, the, to the wife now, the original mm-hmm. wife. Mm-hmm. But now it would be taken as if uh, this is the second wife to this man. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Actually, the point is, mm-hmm. When when Aga is brought here, mm-hmm. she is not brought to continue going in bed with Abraham. Abraham. Yeah. She's the purpose is mm-hmm. to bear children. Mm-hmm. So the first time she conceives, mm-hmm. that is the end of going in bed with Abraham. Abraham. Okay. So that is what was happening. So that is what in was Kambaland. happening in Cumberland. Yeah. And uh, now in my case now it goes to another level. Because the Munyoki, who was the husband to my grandma, Mm -hmm. had passed on back in 1973. Mm -hmm. So, which means my mom didn't uh, get uh, Munyoki alive. Mm -hmm. So, what happens now in this case is when this woman is brought home... So, let me just clarify. Mm -hmm. Grandma Mm -hmm. was married to Munyoki. Grandma was married to Munyoki. And she did not bear yes she d- child. yes she, she did not bear any child then the husband Nyoki, yes passes on before they get any baby yes okay and because of that now she she went ahead to get a lady mm-hmm. who will bear children mm-hmm. to retain the name Munyoki. okay that is what happened with us mm-hmm. and the mom was uh, came home mm-hmm. and uh, the process went, and we, we came to be the four of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how wow. we were born. Wow. So the next question would be, mm-hmm. how was growing up then, yeah. being born in a family without a father? Mm-hmm. Uh, did your mom live with your grandma? Mm-hmm. Uh, did they manage you know, to provide you with a comfortable life? Mm-hmm. Generally, how, how would you say you guys lived in your, in your young age? Okay, I would say uh, we had the best. My mom left me home at uh, age one, mm-hmm. one year, when I was one year old. Mm-hmm. 
then we were raised by grandma but mom was coming home regularly mm -hmm. so we were we were very happy family mm -hmm. and uh, the reason i'm saying it's not so much privileged i, I privileged families mm -hmm. is because we didn't have fine for cash mm -hmm. but we had what we needed like uh, food mm -hmm. uh, my grandma was a great farmer mm -hmm. we used to get a, a huge uh, produce so many people around even could come for her to give to give to donate to give some food for them mm -hmm. and uh, it was great by the way and that time she used to sell the produce for us to buy whatever we needed to have yeah. in our in our home mm -hmm. and uh, everything went well mm -hmm. from my uh, my one year up to around 10 11 years somewhere there mm -hmm. that is when my grand uh, my, my sister was joining from one we didn't have cash mm -hmm. my mom didn't have cash also at this time mm -hmm. So what happened, my grandma had to clear what we had uh, from farming now. That's your, your livestock, the and, livestock your farm and the farm produce. Yeah. She sold them. That mm -hmm. time they were going for, they were very cheap. They were being yeah. sold very cheap. Mm -hmm. And she sold all the goats and all the cows that time. Mm -hmm. We were left with the farm produce only. She sold the the cows and the goats mm -hmm. to get school fees for my grand uh, for my sister, mm -hmm. and now things now started changing here. Now from this time, the farm produce now changed from coming when we we, we harvest, mm -hmm. it we changed from now taking it back home, and it was being taken to my sister's school, school to mm -hmm. pay school fees. And so now you are struggling because. Uh, Everything goes to her. Yani Everything was going to school. Grandma had decided this girl has to study. She had to study because I remember mm -hmm. when she sold all these things and now she took her to form one. Mm -hmm. After coming back, she met her lady, mm -hmm. it's a neighbor. She asked her, my grandma, now, you, now that you have sold all the cows and all the goats mm -hmm. to take her to school, mm -hmm. And it's only form one. We have three more years to go. Mm -hmm. Form two, form three, form four. Yeah. What will you sell for her to go to uh, to continue with the for the other classes? Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandma was so much courageous. Mm -hmm. She told her, "It's okay. I've I've sold that, and it's what I had. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? Mm -hmm. Where these goats and these cows were sleeping, mm -hmm. there is some manure." And now that I'm just using manure to cover it. Now, if I use the language, the exact language, it is the feces. Mm -hmm. In Kamba, it is my imagine the feces mm -hmm. for these cows and the goats. I'll go and collect it, sell it to pay school fees. To pay school fees. Yes. That like is faith, that is uh, another level and she told her i will ensure my girl will not be abused or called names by other girls in this village in english mm. and she failed to understand or failed to respond wow that's it wow you have grown up uh, at first things were a little bit easy mm -hmm. uh, but now things are difficult mm -hmm. but all along you are okay mm -hmm. uh, and your mom you know visits you regularly mm -hmm. your mom is in your lives mm -hmm. at what point mm -hmm. does this change at what point do you guys realize oh seems like we no longer have mm -hmm. a mother uh thank you so much for that i i remember mm -hmm. we had a very nice mom, very nice moment with my our mom mm -hmm. Actually, that time, it's the time during Christmas. You know, me ni metuwa ushago. During Christmas, you'd hear people coming from Nairobi going home. Like, they they were not using uh, bikes. Mm -hmm. They were walking, carrying radios mm -hmm. with a lot of voice, uh, volume. Oh, yeah. eh? mm -hmm. See, like, there are some songs, Kijana Mumo, those songs. 
Monica, we were quite go go on go near kids, is it? Such songs. They were very. That person was singing for Monica. Yes. But not not ah. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell will understand that song. Those are some songs which we used to listen that time. <laughs> Mimi, Merry Christmas songs, I, I knew the ones for uh, the choir, the choir songs. <laughs> Merry Lord, child, Jesus Christ, I've, not, I've just learned it the, the other day. <laughs> but that okay, time so, they were, so we they were coming home mm -hmm. with those radios carrying them here moment. so mom was very sharp mm -hmm. she wasn't she didn't want to lower her class mm -hmm. so she was coming ah, with a bike eh? okay. and they, she was not being brought up to home mm -hmm. she was being dropped at the gate mm -hmm. and they would like we knew the radio she would come with <laughs> no, guys, you we've always believed that it is the loyal community. <laughs> Sorry, we always believe that it is the loyal community who travel with their radios. As our loyal the hapa, then we will come and be there. Hapa, konya mabega. So, so now, mom could come uh -huh. and uh, she's dropped at the gate. Uh -huh. And then anatoa radio yake. Uh -huh. Anaeka kaset. Zile za kuzungusha hivi na kalamu. Wale watu wa, wa zile enzi wanazikumbuka. Uh -huh. Zile za kuzungusha hivi. Uh -huh. Already amekamu na kaset zaka hameziweka. Uh -huh. So tulikuwa tunangoja maze tumekaa. Hata kama ni saa saba usiku. Uh -huh. Tuko hapa tunangoja. Tu, tu, tugisiki, tugisiki kituka mbali. Mm -mm, that's not our mom. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Yeah, tuisikie kwa gate. gate. Tuisikie vuu. <laughs> Okay. Men we used to enjoy. She would bring us clothes for Christmas. Yeah. Men, I remember that time. It was a nice moment, very sweet moment. I wouldn't even think of um like of a father. Because I know yeah, I have satisfied. I have my grandma. Yes. I have mom here. Yeah. She's bringing for us. Like Christmas was everything. <laughs> we better lack anything else during the the whole of the year. But Christmas. Oh God. Mom is coming, man. Wow. And the you the way we used to 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 prepare the ground the the compound. Yeah. Then all of a sudden things now comes to change. I remember now from 2045 my mom got saved. Because previous previously she was not saved. Mm -hmm. So 0405 she got saved. Mm -hmm. And she joined a church here in Nairobi. Wow. And um I think she was naive when it comes to salvation. She didn't know anything yeah. to do with God. So here she gets saved and she joins a church. Mm -hmm. It's here at Pipeline. Mm -hmm. Number one, I want to mention something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm born again. And I'm not uh, here to fight church. I'm not here to show people church is not good. I know there are remnants in the kingdom. There are so many, like there are so many people who are true to God. Yeah. And I know also I'm born again. I do preach. I minister. So I know there are people who minister and they know the true gospel. So this time after mom joined the church, she was told, she, I think she explained to the pastor, the host pastor of that church, how the, it, the family came to be. And then she was told that is not the true definition of a family as to, uh, uh, as to the, uh, uh, in reference to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And she was told you should have a husband who is known mm -hmm. and bear children with your husband. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think she was referenced, oh, why am I forgetting this verse? There is a verse which says, mm -hmm. Children born in sin. She was told, these are not your children. Mm -hmm. You need to leave them and get ma a man to marry you whom you will bear legit children. Mm -hmm. These are illegitimate children. Mm -hmm. And that is what she picked. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came home. And she said, um, 
nimeokoka and I've come to realize that uh, you are not my children. I did not get you in the right way. My pastor has told me to leave you and to leave this home. Then I go in prayer and I will get a man who will marry me and bear children who are accept acceptable by God. Mm-hmm. Because for you, you are not acceptable by God. Mm-hmm. And that was it. We didn't believe it. We've been with you, ma'am, for that long. What has happened? Mm-hmm. And we thought she was joking, but it was serious. Mm-hmm. And she stood on her ground. And she said, once I live here, you will never see, you will never see me again. That will be the end of me and you. Mm-hmm. And that's all, that was it. She left home when I was in class, class five. Mm-hmm. She left home and she went. Mm-hmm. And from that time, from class 5004, my mom never stepped in that home again. It's only her remains which came home in 2010. Her body after she died. After she died. Oh. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Before we touch on uh, mom's death mm-hmm. and burial, mm-hmm. now after she rejected you guys, mm-hmm. uh, you mentioned that she came back to Nairobi, I believe, right? Uh, did you make any attempt as a family to reach out to her mm-hmm. and you know reconvince her that we're still your children? Mm-hmm. We know you are our mom mm-hmm. and that we can work things out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we did. Uh, even after she said that and she came back to Nairobi, uh, we still followed up. We could, uh, we could actually, we started sensing something is not right, even before she came home. Mm-hmm. And then we should, we kept on following up, even after she came and said now what she said. Mm-hmm. And she cut communication with us. But we still, we would still try to reach her. I remember there is a time we came to Nairobi because of the same. Our grandma told us one thing. No matter what she says, no matter what the pastor says, no matter what happens, you will never get another mother. Mm-hmm. She's your mother. Mm-hmm. And she used to repeat that. Even if she's not talking to you, even if she has said you are not, church, you are not in her mm-hmm. children, mm-hmm. grandma could sell whatever we have to give us a sphere and send us to Nairobi. Even when we don't want to come. Okay. She used to tell us, send one of us. Go to Nairobi uh, to see your mom and bring us a report on how she is doing. Mm-hmm. And that is what she used to do. Things changed. Like at that point, we tried as much we can. Our grandma tried as much she can because she was happy for a family joined together. Yeah. But it was not successful. Mm-hmm. I remember a time happened that we came to Nairobi with my sister we were handed over to a guy at, at Kitui stage and he was told kindly, where are you going? He said, I'm, I will at light at GM, but when I alight there, I will be going to work. So I'll not be able to take them to the house. Mm-hmm. But now the, the vehicle we were in, it took long before it got to Nairobi. So we got to Nairobi at around six, which was late. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sun was about to set. So this man had to forgo the job. Yeah, because now it's late. And it's we late. Are children. We are children. Yeah. He told me, do you know the place where your mom stays? I told him, yes, I can remember the place, but I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. 
is asked me, well, if I, we go with you, will you direct us? I told him yes. So I gave him just a specific place. I gave him like uh, Mkuru Kwa Jenga near the mosque. Mm-hmm. So we went. But he told me, in case you see somebody from home, hold them so that they can show us your mom's place. Yeah. So uh, Eastlands, Mukuru Kwa Jenga, Kwa Ruben and the Pipeline, those areas, it's like they are full of cambers. You cannot walk like four or five kilometers without meeting your relative or somebody you know. Mm-hmm. So that time we walked and I saw at a distance, I saw a man I knew from home. Then I told him, that is so and so. And I went and I got hold of him. I told, we let go of this man we have come, we have, we've come we with come from, from Kitui. From Kitui. Mm-hmm. And now this Mze says, I can't let you uh, leave you from my hands, not unless I see your mother. So we went to the place I knew as uh, where mom was staying, but we found that she had already moved. Mm-hmm. And we went to the other, you know, a neighbor directed us mm-hmm. because now I was known to some, most of the neighbors there. Mm-hmm. She say, uh, they said, ah, we know this boy. The mother moved to the, another house, uh, like uh, um, five, 500, 500 meters from where she, uh, we were at that time. Mm-hmm. So we were taken there. And when we got there, our mom was not happy with it. Mm. The question, she did not even greet us. She asked us, who has told you to come? You are here and you are like, what do I say? Mm. I have done my budget. So when you come here, I have done my budget. But anyway, she, she, she allowed us in, though it was not the happy moments when you see your children coming. Mm. And we did not stay in a happy moment together with her. That was not only the time. There is also another time I went, uh, I was given fear by my grandma to come and say hi to mom. And I left home to come to Nairobi alone. I came and I went up to, uh, uh, up to where she was. Mm-hmm. My friend, I remember that day, it pained me because I found her washing clothes out just outside the door, at the door, outside the house. Mm-hmm. When she saw me, she stood and she did not greet me, nor say anything. She stood, stepped back to give me a way to get in. Mm-hmm. And there was that moment of silence. And you don't know what will happen. I don't know what ha- will happen when she comes back. When she comes Into in. The house. So I'm in the house, I'm sitting there, and uh, she comes after fin- finalizing on the cleaning. And she asked me the same, same question she asked me. And she asked us, who has told you to come? Hmm. And uh, she told me, Una ni- una budget. Well, this but, is... Uh, Mom. Are really difficult words. I'm and it's mom. mom. And like you see, this is your mother. And she's telling you like, I don't need you here. Mm. You're not mine. You're not my children. And uh, that mm. reminds me of that verse mm-hmm. uh, in Isaiah. Mm-hmm. That can a mother forget mm-hmm. Her children, Her children, the children she has born. Mm-hmm. That is what happened uh, to you guys. She did forget. That time I came alone, yeah. it was painful to see the mother you are expecting. You know, <laughs> I, I'm laughing at this point because uh, when I was being told to come to say hi to mom, the first thing which rang in my mind was, Man, I'm going to see my mom. And she knew I loved fish. I know today when I get in that house, the first thing, she will cook she will fish for me. Oh my. That is something I was like, every time I hear Nairobi, I would think of fish. Yeah. And I know like when I get to Nairobi, that is what she mom will prepare. will prepare fish. And I could come for that. 
Oh, wow. So this time you get a. Uh, mm -hmm. It's. I can only imagine. It. It must have been very difficult. Mm -hmm. And painful without words. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know if if the entire world rejects you, you're mm -hmm. always sure. Your mom. Your mom. Your parents. Will be there for your you. Your family will still love you. Mm -hmm. So, please share with us what was the impact. Mm -hmm. of this rejection mm -hmm. to you how did it make you feel how did you did it make you behave mm -hmm. how did you you know deal with it wow the impact was huge it was great because now is that when we were beginning the story i said we didn't have cash so the only cash we were getting is either we sell our livestock or uh, the, the, the produce, okay. yeah. uh, the crops, or we get cash from our mom. That was the only source. Now at this point, the cash we, we are getting from mom is cut off. Mm -hmm. the, my, my, the, the livestock had been already sold because of my sister's school fees. So at this point, things changed because we don't have cash. Yeah. We love to look for cash. Where we, where we get, we love to do something for us to get cash. So that time, my grandma started cutting firewood to sell. Not only that, she used, uh, she started now, because things were tough. Mm. Things were tough. Because now, anything we depended on, it's gone. Even the climate changed, the produce from the shamba was not good. So things now, it's like nothing was working for us. Mm -hmm. So at this time, there is a, <clears throat> the ropes which are used for cows, uh, to tie cows and the goats. My, our grandma could wake up very early in the morning. Like uh, whoever, is, uh, whoever is, uh, is around during the day, maybe we are not in school, we could go for size or bring so that zitengenezo nini. Uh, kamba. Zikuja za kutengeneza kamba. Uh -huh. But if all of us were in school, our grandma is busy, maybe cutting the firewood to sell and for that, so that we can get food for the evening, yeah? uh -huh. the supper. The next morning, very early in the morning at four, she would wake up, go to the uh, forest and get saizo. Uh -huh. She would come like around five in the morning Maze anatengeneza kamba, hizo hizo uzi zake. Okay. Then all of us, the four of us, would wake up and start uh, making the, the ropes. Mm -hmm. I know very well how to make it. I can make it very fast, actually. That was a training ground for me. We made ropes, and then, like, around six, we could be having, like, around 15, 20 of them. Mm -hmm. Then our grandma pick, picks them, go to sell them. Some people would buy them with uh, the normal price, which was around 20. Mm -hmm. But now she would, sometimes she would go and get somebody who will tell, will tell her, I can only pick them with 10 bob. Yeah. Sometimes 5 bob. But the rule was for her, my children must take breakfast. Mm -hmm. We may miss lunch, but breakfast was a must. So that's why she was doing all this. So whatever you'll give me, I'll pick it because of my children. And there are some people who could take advantage of that. Of that yeah. We could also take uh, the so-called kibarua. Mm. We could go, it's like um, broke our land, a, a piece, the piece of land which they are preparing. And we, we tell them we'll Children prepare. The land for them. Yes, we'll till the land for you for this, uh, this amount of cash. Also, from my side, uh, I, I, was, I was telling you, God prepared me for so many things since I was a child. Eh? Mm. I started, uh, I became a photographer when I was class, in class six. Not professionally, because I was just training. But I, by the time I was in class seven, class eight, I was a professional pro photographer. And I used to go to, uh, to be called for events, funerals, uh, uh, or weddings, such things. Mm. 
So this, uh, the photography thing used to bring a good cash because I could do a photo, one photo for 20 bob. And maybe when I'm going to print it, it will be, pr I will print it with three bob. Mm -hmm. Though it will cost me the transport, but, but mostly I would not, I was, I wasn't using, uh, I wasn't using any means of transport. Mm -hmm. I was walking to Kitui town. Mm -hmm. Kitui from home, it's around 16 kilometers. I would walk for that 16 kilometers, get to Kitui, print these photos, come back and distribute them. Okay. Sometimes you would sell them, you would give to people and they refuse to take. But we had to work with our hands for us to get food. So that was one impact, the fact that now mm -hmm. your standards of living as a family have gone lower. Yeah. And now you have to do manual mm -hmm. work. Yeah to earn a living mm -hmm. and to sustain yes. the family. Mm -hmm. uh, what other impact uh, did, that, did uh, your mom's rejection have on you in terms of behavior, mm -hmm. in terms of thoughts? Wow. The other thing would I, which I will say is, uh, you know that moment you see somebody walking with their mother or laughing, they are enjoying, and then you just think of, what about my mother? And that is the time I started thinking of hey, so and so wakona mama na wakona baba. I don't have a father and my mom has denied us. <clears throat> yeah. The same, the community themselves, they knew what has happened and they also rejected us. Mm -hmm. The uncles around, the people, the relatives around, they didn't want to see us around. Our grandma now, they were the, my grandma <clears throat> stood on the ground and said, these are my children. I remember she went through a lot to keep us around. Another way this, uh, the change affected me is from this time around now, because after uh, struggling to bring back the love our mother, we had with our mother and it failed, Pain failed me. Pain failed me. And because of the rejection by my mom, rejection by the people around me, I felt like it's bec all these things are happening because of a woman. They are happening because of my mom. And now I hated women. I never wanted to see a woman around me. I only had in mind the only women who are supposed to be respected, there are only two in my life. My grandma and my sister. Mm -hmm. I hated women in my life. From primary school, even I joined uh, high school, still hating women. I didn't want, like I never thought, I never had in my mind, in vo my vocabulary, like conversing with a lady. No. Whatever I say, it's final. That is what is, was in my mind that time. That if I tell a lady to do this, that one is final. Don't ask why or give me any explanation. Do what I've said. Uh -huh. Yes. I remember in Form 2, beginning of Form 2, I, I, I was studying. Then uh, some people were making noise. Then I told them to keep quiet because I was, in, I was studying. Uh -huh. And a girl just answered me rudely and jokingly in a way. But now remember, my mind tells me no lady should respond to what mm, you say. Speak back. Yes. Mm. My friend, this girl, I slapped this girl on the face and she was wearing specs. She had uh, uh, eye problems. I released my hand with the whole force and I slapped her on the face. The glasses broke on the eyes. Mm. Not only that, I felt like you have not done it. Either you have not done, done justice to this. You need to add more. You know, she was just sitting. So I hit her this way. She goes back. And then I hit her on the other side back. She hits the look and sleeps there. The because whole, of the anger, because the of the anger, the pain yes. that you have 
against women not against because the of women. anything they've done really but because of the rejection yes that you faced with your mother that was just because of that mm. and the whole class went silent and that was me i didn't have any apology i remember there is a guy i was about to uh pierce that uh to you i, I had a knife karibu ni mdunge kifua i had pain like don't cross my path and i think mm. that speaks to mm-hmm. probably a good number of people mm-hmm. in our society yeah uh who are living in pain mm-hmm. you don't know why you are angry you mm-hmm. don't know why you're doing the things that you're doing the things that you know very well mm-hmm. with all of you that yeah. they are not right mm-hmm. but yet you have this negative energy in you and you have you want to release it mm. you want to release it um so the other impact that i would want us to talk about is mm-hmm. how did you now feel about your mom um what was your prayer for her mm-hmm. did you ever wish that she would come back wow I never I never ever prayed for her to come back. Mm-hmm. Actually my prayer was for her never to step in that home. And the love which I had for her turned into turned hatred. to hatred and that pain. So I hated my mom. And when she got sick and I was informed of her sickness I never thought of I I didn't even even come to say to see her but at some point she was so weak that she had to be taken home and she said she should not be brought to our home now yeah. let her be taken back to her mom where she's born her mom's place. <laughs> yes so she was taken there and I didn't even go to see her to took some time but after some time after a few months we uh, we went and she asked for forgiveness but the pain was still in me mm-hmm. and remember my prayer is let her not come home so she was so weak and she was taken to hospital mm-hmm. and now when i heard she is in the hospital i started praying immediately like when i heard now she's weak and she's in hospital i started praying i could even fast and pray for her death i started praying for my mother to die i seriously prayed for her to die all this because mm-hmm. she had hurt you she had hurt me she had made other people to hurt me not only me but my family and then i felt when we are with our grandma here even if we are struggling we are peaceful we have peace in the house so my mind was telling me when she comes here we will not have peace mm. we'll be fighting every now and then again and again so i felt like she should not come home then one time i came from school came home and then found uh, my grandma my two grandmas at home because they were the ones who were taking her uh, taking care of her at the hospital I asked them how is she they kept quiet how is she doing they told me sit down and eat we'll we'll tell you what uh, how she is doing i told them ah, it's not a big deal just tell me she's dead it's not a big deal just tell me she's dead this is not this is no story it's not a big deal i i, I, did, I, I never felt it her. yeah i lost her. i lost her uh, almost 5 6 years ago so tell me she is dead and tell me when it, when is the funeral and they told you they confirmed she, they said yeah it's true who told you nobody but i knew i just told them i knew wow wow mm-hmm. wow we can see clearly i think from your story about the effect mm-hmm. uh that rejection can have 
in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, as we near conclusion, mm-hmm. I would want us to deal with now, how did you deal with the anger, mm-hmm. the bitterness that was in you? One, I would say, it's like I didn't know that I have pain in me. Mm-hmm. I just felt it's like life has hardened me. I didn't know that I have pain which is still in my heart. Even this time, the mom is dead. I didn't know that it's because of pain which is making me to react this way. Yeah, you you didn't want to be vulnerable. Yes. You wanted to cover up mm-hmm. your pain. Yes. And the fact that you need to be accepted mm-hmm. and, you know, put up a face of, I don't need I'm to be accepted man, I'm a man, I'm strong man. Yeah. I, I can do, you, you, you see now, I, I'm a photographer. Even after joining from one, actually, in the school there was a guy who was coming to take photos there. Mm-hmm. I went and met the deputy principal and told him I'm a professional photographer. And he gave me permission to take photograph, uh, photos uh, the, the, the student that was the one who was taking photos mm. and the guy was coming who had been given permission the permission was cancelled wow. so this uh, deputy told me you'll be doing it and maybe because you are a day scholar on, uh, during the weekend on Sunday you'll go and print and bring to them yeah. that is what I was doing that is a good uh, it was called Mr. Mutunga Mr. Mutunga where he is may God bless him Amen. he didn't know what he was doing he thought it's like because I, I don't think that I explained to anybody my, about my life. But the support he gave me, that chance giving me and cancelling the other guy. Gives you that, an opportunity to yes, help your family. My, my grandma couldn't lack sugar. I was buying sugar for her. Wow. But do you know, as I was telling you, my, I, all through I didn't know I have pain. Mm. My mother dies. I'm the one who organized my, my mom's burial. I was informed too. I'm the one who went to Kitui town to print the program, to design it and to print it. I'm the one who's like, I sought like everything for that barrier. Mm. The instruments, the chairs to, to which we will be sat on. Uh, the pastor was to come and preach that day. To me, I'm very strong, man. No pain. Then a, a, a brother comes. And there's a, a guy from home. He's called Sylvester. He came and told me, Joshua, come to go to Kai, to Kaka, to Kiongea. How is it, Pole? I can be at a Nashida. It's no more. See what one Akufa to know on a Zikwa. The life. Be a Joshua. Though you feel you are strong, but your face. Your face betrays you. Your face betrays you. You can see that your heart. You can see that there is pain in you. You can see that you are not okay. Though you are joining us in the choir practice, you are singing, but we can see your face is not normal, Joshua. That is when now I started asking myself questions. And now the same year, I got born again. Actually, immediately after my mother's uh, death and burial, after salvation, I gave my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And now this is the point where my healing started, the journey for healing. Mm -hmm. Now going back to school, I even, like, I started praying. I Like, I went deep. I was in church. Now I have added salvation. So now I need to seek God. And this is the time I I started realizing, Joshua, you still have pain in you. Yeah. So I started, how do I work it out? Mm -hmm. So how do I work it out? So I came up with some methods on how to work it out because I don't want to mess with my salvation. So that is wrong. So what do I do? Mm -hmm. If you do anything which may lead me to sin, Mm -hmm. I will laugh. Mm -hmm. That is the decision I made, I will laugh and leave you. I remember somebody could do something which is, I feel like I need to hit you right now, smash you. But I'm born again. I laugh and leave. Then I go at somewhere, 
alone. I cry because of it. Like, why have you done this to me? I cry alone. Because of that pain, like, you could find me alone. If you could find me at that moment, like, then I go back, I'm, I'm okay now. And as somebody does, I walked that journey. There is, there is a team we used, there's a guy called Jaffet. We used to pray, pray and fast together with some other, uh, another, uh, another team. It was a big team of around 10, uh, 10 students, girls and uh, boys. We used to pray and fast. And that thing helped me. And wow. I became a nice man. Wow. But mm-hmm. I had not released my mother. I became born again. I you felt have learned how to deal with people, I have learned but... how to deal with people. I've accepted ladies now. I've started interacting with ladies. Mm-hmm. I've started listening to ladies. Mm-hmm. Like now we can talk yeah, with okay. a lady. I can I can have a talk with a lady. Mm-hmm. But still I I was left with the pain of uh, that re, uh, that pain of my mother. Mm. I had not released her. So anytime you celebrate Mother's Day, and I see people celebrating on Facebook. I felt like, <laughs> what is what is it for? Mm. Mothers are I have no I have no business in our lives. Like they can, there is nothing important they have done in our lives. So that is what I felt. But at this point, I love ladies. I I bring them in my circle. I listen to them. But still I feel mothers have not done anything good to me. There's nothing special about mothers. Yes, why celebrate them? Yes. Yeah. So that was it. And I never celebrated mothers. Mm -hmm. I even went to campus. Born again. I was filled uh, by the Holy Spirit when I was in campus. Still never loved mothers. But now... Come 2016, Mother's Day 2016. Mm-hmm. I remember I sat in my house, still in canvas, and uh, I just went through the chats on the Facebook how people are celebrating their mothers, mm-hmm. others they are celebrating their mothers and they right rest rest in peace. Yeah. I wish you are alive. What what what? Then I just found myself shedding tears. The memory of the years when we had good moments with mom came. Mm -hmm. I just started crying. I just thought, I wish my mom was alive today. That is the time I just sat down and I started writing. And the thing I wrote is, Sometimes I sit down and think how you, you people feel who have a father and who have a mother. I sit down and think how you people feel who have a one, one parent. For me, I've never enjoyed having a dad in my life. I see people laughing with their dad. I've never had that experience. I see people laughing with their mothers. I had it when I was a child. But in my, I, my, my, in my now teenage, uh, I've never experienced this. So how do you feel when you are celebrating them and they are alive and you can touch them, you can laugh with them, you can sit and discuss with them? How, how do you feel? Mm-hmm. And then at the end, is, I just said, I wish, mom, you are alive today. I celebrate you. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, that's yeah. a big question. Mm-hmm. For all of us, yes. Um, mm-hmm. Let's uh, conclude with what would your message be mm-hmm. to parents um, out there, to the children mm-hmm. out there, mm-hmm. both uh, people who come from all kinds of families, all mm-hmm. kinds of families. Mm-hmm. What would your message be with regard to unity, to love, to mm-hmm. acceptance mm-hmm. of each other in our families? Wow. Let me begin with the part of parents. Mm-hmm. What I would say is mm-hmm. parents, love your children. 
it doesn't matter how they came to be. It doesn't matter how they were conceived. Love your children. God loves us all. I don't know whether if my mom would have thought I'll be the man I am today. But today, I wish my mom was alive. So sometime, your children will think, will remember what you have taken them through. If it is love, remember, they will remember the love you showed them. The pain you will take them through, it will affect them from to where that, it will affect them even if, even if you take them uh, through when they're in the womb. The pain will take them from that point. Even when they grow, they will still have that. Not unless now God comes in and touches them to transform them. Yeah. Love them. Even if people talk, stand strong. Fight for your children. Support them for them to grow. Amen. Let me talk to children. Yeah. And when I'm talking to children, I'm talking to you even, uh, you, you parents. Because I'm saying, we are, the other day I was saying, as far as you are born by somebody, you are a child to that person. You are a yeah. daughter, mm. you are a son to that person. Love your parents. I know some parents have taken us through tough times. They have mistreated us. What I will tell you, just enjoy when they are alive today. I know there are parents who don't even want you in their life. Yeah, sometimes I normally say, uh, better you have a photo of them. See, uh, see, just take that photo and tell the photo, I love you, mom. So that that pain will not fail you so much. Sometimes they might be toxic in your life. Give them space, but don't hate them. They might be toxic in your life. So give them space, but don't hate them to that point. Like, I don't want to see you. You should never be in a... Because some t- at some point, you may sit down and think, I wish you were alive. So laugh your parents. Support them. For- Make sure you call them. Tell them, Daddy, Mama, I love you. There is a program we do in church called Man in Love. I've seen men come in that program with pain. With they are not they they don't have any shining face because they have rejection in them. At some point, we get to uh, write our pains and what we have gone through as men, and then we read and we share with each other, and we burn the papers. And then the the response to that we normally say, "You have to act." This person you have not talked to for long, talk, call them today. And most of men, they talk of their parents, their dad, their mom. They don't talk to them because they did something to them. And at this point, we tell them, call them today. Don't sleep today, call them. Now, I'm happy when we meet the next time we normally meet with testimonies. Men were happy, men were laughing, men were rejoicing. They'd say, like the time I called my dad and I received the call, he did not say anything. He started crying. He cried. And the moment, we, the only thing we said is, I, I told him, I love you, daddy. And he said, they have been waiting for your call. Some would say, like from that time, I've not called my dad but my dad, every morning, he makes sure he calls me. And in the evening, he calls me to say hi to us. This shows your father is waiting for this call. Your mom is waiting for this call. Mm. Because anajua ali kukosea, nakini sasa yata mahali yako, maybe yata hamejirudia kaone nyo ni likosea mwana yangu. Your call, that one call you make, it will change their life. Amen. Amen. So Thank you. God Amen. bless you guys. Amen. Amen. God bless you for sharing with us. Yeah. Ah, guys, that is what we have for you today. Mm-hmm. Our message to all of us is mm. reach out to your parent. Mm. 
today. Yeah. Call your mom and go to your Mpesa and send them something, the little that you have, mm -hmm. especially in this tough economic time. Mm -hmm. Because they are our treasures. We believe and trust God that this has ministered to you and that this will be used to transform mm -hmm. lives. If you would wish to reach out to us, mm -hmm. please write to us um, on our email. Yeah. That is the Kakai's family at gmail.com. The Kakai's family at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Finally, we are always on the lookout for new stories. If you're there and you have a story, please reach out to us. God bless you. Remember yeah. to subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.